Hello, 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 and welcome to another Round Rouge unit of the Reed. And today we are taking a look at the T72 M1 Rilke for Poland. So I'm not going to get too much into the standard history of the T72. I'd rather leave that for a USSR model of this tank. But anyway, the T72 was a rather mass produced tank by the Soviet Union during the 70s and also massively exported. As you can tell by its map, blue countries being current operators of the T-72 and Red Countries being former operators, it was a rather popular tank on the eastern side of the road. And of course, one of the countries receiving it was Poland, because they are kind of a part of the whole USSR, Soviet, Eastern Bloc Empire. And by the time they got to 1986, they realised the yeah, T-72s weren't exactly up to snuff to modern day standards. So they came up with the Rilke project. And it's pretty much ready to upgrade their T-72s cheaply using homegrown facilities. And such upgrades include a new fire control system, a night vision devices, smoke grenades, side skirts, and explosive reactive armor to make it a lot better than their standard models. And all these upgrades ended up leading to the PT-91 Trotic tank, which is the T-72 that Poland uses today. So in game, the T-72 Emron Rook is an 85-point Polish tank with two weapons available to it. And if you take a look at its first weapon, we got two A46M 125mm cannon with 28 rounds available to the tank with a range of ground at 2275m, 50% accuracy, 30 while moving, 18 AP, above average 4 HE, and a rate of fire of 9 rounds a minute. Overall, a very good gun, definitely above average compared to other guns of its class in pretty much all aspects making this well a good gun and we got a 50 caliber machine gun it's not actually 50 whole calibers it's more like a bunch of 0 0.5 calibers which equals 12.7 millimeters in diameter when we're talking about the bullet offset 50 caliber machine gun gun but i guess if we were to make 50 50 caliber guns and put it in a gun that would be roughly 25 calibers, which would be a lot of calibers. And if we take a look at some miscellaneous stats, 15 on the front, 9 on the side, 4 back, and 4 up top. It's got 10 HP, medium size, medium optics, at a speed of 60 km an hour, 110 on the road, on autonomy of 700 km, year restricted to 1986, type restricted to mechanized and armored decks, and it is also a prototype unit. So the T-72 M1 Rolk in battle is a very good mid-range price tank for the Eastern Bloc. Now instead of just going on about, you know, how to use the Rolk and just saying, you know, it's a rather good tank. Because it does tank things. We all know it just shoots other stuff that moves on the ground. I'd rather compare it to other tanks of its class in the Eastern Bloc. So away we go. So first up we've got T-72 and run CZ for Czechoslovakia and it is 10 points cheaper but if you lose 2 AP power you lose 1 frontal armor and the big thing is that you lose 2 top armor meaning that you can't survive a GR7 bombing run also you do lose 1 rate per minute in terms of rate of fire and secondly we got the KPZ T72 M1 for East Germany you can really tell they like the M1 tanks it does have better AP yeah, and the CZ earlier, you know, it still suffers in frontal and top armor and fire rates. And honestly, for five points more, the yeah, top armor and fire rate and armor really do prove to be quite a big difference. And also, we got T72 M1M. Now, compared to the M1M, honestly, the M1M is kind of a better choice to get. The gun is still pretty much the same. You do lose one rate of fire, but it is faster by 10 kilometers an hour off-road which is you know rather decent but the main thing is it's got that ATGM missile launcher and at long range that can prove to be very useful for sniping enemy tanks and getting the first shot off but it doesn't mean the Rook is completely useless because honestly going from eight rounds a minute to nine rounds a minute I think is a rather big deal because other tanks such as the Leopard 2, the M1 IP Abrams for example do have that nine rounds a minute fire rate and when in those close range engagements it's all about who can shoot faster with their main cannon so i'd still kind of get the rook 
over the Emron M. But once again, that really just comes out into personal preference. It does seem like a lot of plays do prefer the Rogue over the M1M. I see the Rogue mainly in a lot of replays because it is a it's a fantastic tank to bring up. And what also makes all these tanks good is that they are available in mechanized decks. But overall, M1 Rook, very solid mid-range tank. That's good for your Eastern Block mid-range tank's needs. And I'm going to start off at that. This has been and the Rangaroo Junit of the Reek. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and as usual, please just take it easy.